So the next couple videos were supposed to be five packs of uh, Matchbox cars, but we're going to have a little change of pace here. I'm going to throw an extra th uh, video in here. Uh, went to an antique store today. It was the last day for it. Um, it's been there since I think 2013. And um, uh, it seems like it's been there a lot longer than that. But that's all the longer it's been there I guess. But um, today was their last day and so I bought some uh, stuff there. It's the same place that I think the last couple haul videos have been from. Uh, I have some stuff right next to me that I guess we'll start off with. So the first thing that I got here, I have to work on this to get it to work. But I have this old uh, grate for a, uh, it could be for a ceiling, but it would probably be in the floor. Um, you know, it's it's for like a register. You know, it's got, it's got vents in there. You can see it looks like it has the remains of birds in there. I don't know. Uh... Anyway, this was outside. I think this was like 10 bucks. So, really good deal for this. Usually these are expensive. Um, I have to straighten out the vent. You can you can see that uh, this vent here is bent. Uh, so they don't open right now. So, it's going to take some work to get it to work. But, um, this isn't... Um, oh, you can't see my thumb. Sorry. This is the little switch that goes back and forth to open and close these. And it's not rusted solid, but you can see where they're bent uh, down, like right right inside, right in this area. You can see where those vents are bent. Um, so that's really cool. Um, I like architectural salvage. So I got that. I'm going to set that down, and then I'll... Uh, get to the next thing here which is completely different um i don't even know what the bottom of this looks like okay okay 1991 is when this is from uh Ertl, which i could have told you that there's the collector number this is the international harvester corporation 66 series Tractors, where'd our dust case go? Oh, it's stuck inside the lid. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to tell you about this collection first. Um, so the 66 series looks to me like it... Oh, no. Okay. Nope, I take that back. They... They all look the same at the first glance, except for maybe this one. They all have cabs, but um, they're all different tractors. Um, they just look the same at the first glance. Uh, the pack that we have, I believe, is number two. You can see there. And this came out in July, August of 1982. Not, I said 82, 1992, I'm sorry. Uh, they made these uh, 66 series tractors, Ertl did, from 1992 to 1994. Uh, you can read that there. Um, basically, uh, International has made the 66 series since 1972. This is a tribute by the Ertl Company. Each set was available for a limited time only and not offered again. This was a special edition tractor. I've never seen this one. Uh, they probably didn't make very many of those. Alright, so I've told you about this. These are the tractors that's in this series here. The 966 Hydro with duels, the 1066 turbo with a deluxe cab, 
the um, uh, 1066 Hydro with uh, two post ROPS, which is this top here, and a 1466 Turbo. It doesn't really have any options, you know, no duels or anything on it. So let's look at those. I'm going to set this here for my reference so I can tell you what we're looking at. This is the 966 Hydro. Okay, you can see the duels on it here. Now, Ertl's tractors used to be a lot nicer quality than they are now. I was going to see if I could pull these out and show you guys, but I want to be able to put them back in here. They have to go backwards, and then they come out of these. Uh, those aren't all the way around their axles or anything. They just come out. But um, I don't want to mess with it right now. This is a nice display like this. If I feel need to take, if I feel the need to take them out later, I can. Probably won't happen though. So this is the uh, 966 Hydro with duels, which I mentioned. Brand new from 1993. Never been out of the box. Well, that looks like. They've had a little bit of exposure to maybe moisture or something in like an attic because uh, the paint is bubbled up. Diecast has zinc in it. Uh, when diecast is exposed to moisture for a long period of time, uh, it makes the paint bubble up on it. More than likely that's what happens since these are older. Um, this is the 1066 Turbo with the deluxe cab. And most of that cab is die cast. The top of the cab is plastic, but this whole white part of the cab is die cast along with the rest of the tractor. You can see the front axles pivot on each of these tractors just like the real ones do. Um, all of this here is a sticker as well as the front. There's no slow moving vehicle signs on the back of any of these. Uh, something I'll point out though. The dually does not have the chrome rim around it. Of course, it's not chrome. It's it's actually it is silver. See in these in real life, it is silver. Um, but you can see the other three have that. All right. Then we have another 1066. This is a this is a 1066 turbo. This is a 1066 hydro um, with the uh, two post top on there. She looks like it's attached quite easily. The, the top of this is. Now these are not all the same casting of tractor. Um, if you look at them, they're they're all slightly different. So uh, like this one has the the posts. This one has. I'm sure some holes somewhere for this cab to attach to. Probably behind the... I see a little rivet behind that back wheel there. That's probably where this cab attaches. Uh, you can see there are different minor differences between all of them. Then this is a 1466 turbo. It doesn't have any special features to it, I wouldn't say. Let's have that nice silver uh, rim on the wheel, which to me looks really nice. I never really thought about it on the real ones. It's just, oh, that's how they are. But on these models, that, <laughs> that looks really nice. Here's the back of them here. Now, the slow-moving vehicle sign isn't really noticeable that it's not there on any of them except for this. This, um, what is this one? The 1066 Turbo, there's a lot of solid white here with nothing to break it up. Um, but the rest of them, can't really tell. All right, so that's that. I don't think this com yeah, it comes out of there, but there's not really any reason for it to. 
put our dust case back on that. Somebody tried to tape it on, but obviously that didn't work. Took me a minute to figure out how this box went together when I got it. Alright, so there's the tractors. The rest of this stuff is more traditional stuff that I get at the antique store. Alright, that is a Mattel. Sorry, I'm on the squeaky chair. These little wooden trucks here are made by Mattel back in, I think, 1972. Okay, this one says 1971, but there was a train and a helicopter and a bunch of little train cars and different things, and there were some trucks and stuff. This is one of those trucks. This is, I don't know if this was originally a flatbed truck or if it had sides on it, but it does dump whatever it was originally. It does dump. They're made out of wood, as you can see, wood and uh, plastic. Nothing real special, just something fun for me to collect. I like collecting those little wooden trucks. You don't see them everywhere. Got a uh, Chevrolet Corvair hubcap with a lot of blue paint on it. I assume that maybe the Corvair was blue. <laughs> And somebody was painting over maybe a rust spot or something, and they didn't mask anything off. It's got some dents in it. I wouldn't even say dings. They're just straight up. They're dents. It's got a little rip, tear, whatever, puncture, I guess you would say, in the metal. And it's quite dirty inside. But I don't have any Corvair hubcaps um, except for this one here. Uh, I have not cleaned it up yet. I'll see how it cleans up. It probably cleans up a little better than this. Um, yeah, I don't see these very often, the Corvair hubcap. So, I was happy to find that. I have a book here, a really cool book, on uh, very early cars. Now, part of the clear coat's coming out, clear... Uh, laminate is coming off of the uh, jacket on the book here but it's called veteran and classic or i i'm trying to read it and not read it it says veteran and vintage cars by peter roberts and it's kind of cool uh it, it's got uh you know looks like license plates you can see they're very very early cars um it's an older book too, so probably see when this book was made. That'll tell us. Cause I have a feeling this book's probably from probably the 70s. 1963. This book is from 1963, so the vintage cars of this day would be like like that. You know, early early. That's a 1903. So you know, early early days of uh, cars. It's a Vauxhall Elegance, 1923. Got some uh, Rolls Royce Silver Ghost cars there. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe a Renault. Oh, wait. Renault, 1910. Maybe that's for this. But anyhow, you can see it's very, very early cars. There's a 1904 Cadillac. Anyway, just some very early uh, cars. So I thought that was a cool book. Our jacket is not in such good shape. But the book itself is in good shape. This is pretty cool. Jerus antiseptic hair tonic for relief of loose dandruff. It's an older bottle, you can tell by the label. 
There's the dried up green remnants of the hair tonic. Nice bottle. Just something cool. I'm not going to go through all the cassette tapes I got uh, just because I bought a whole bunch of them. Jack D, Jack DeHaven, wants you. There's Jack DeHaven. Um, DeHaven is quite a popular, or I don't want to say a popular last name, but a common last name in this area. I don't know where DeHaven Chevrolet is at, though. Maybe down by Indianapolis. Anyway, this is a metal plate. Pretty cool. Uh, I had... I gotta pull this... All the stuff out of this bag, or else something's gonna get tore up here. Okay. This is really cool. A 1903, uh, 1909 Maxwell. Maxwell Runabout. Um, just old timers. These are on cardboard. They're made out of cardboard. And then the car is mounted on a piece of wood. Which you can kind of see. I don't know when uh, these are well, these were made at the wood wood grain tells me probably 60s or 70s. Perfect Circle Corporation, Hagerstown, Indiana. They were founded in 1895. But anyway, I've sat in one of these Maxwell runabouts. I don't know if the one I sat in was a 1909. It was a 190 something, and it was bright, bright red. It looked quite a bit like that. It may have been a 1909. But anyway, I got this because I'd sat in. I have sat in one before. Brand new, a 1909 Maxwell runabout cost eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. I'm trying to grab this license plate here. I've never seen one of these before. Polaris. It's more fun in the mud. Dupont Repair. 1-800-4x4ATVs. There's an old Polaris four-wheeler there. I don't know exactly when this is from. 80s or 90s, probably, guessing by the four-wheeler. Um, I've never seen one of these before, so I thought it was cool. So then we have a Hoosier Hospitality license plate. Copyright for these was 1989. This plate here has a 1992 sticker for Delaware County. Uh, I have all my tapes here that I bought. I bought eight or nine of them. I don't remember. Anyway, you can read through there if you want to read what all I got. One more plate here. It's dirty and bent up, but the paint is in good shape. Uh, for Illinois, December of 1975. This is a trailer plate, hence the TR. You can see the corners folded backwards on that one. Got a nice picture frame here. It just says friends all over it, you know pictures of your friends in there or something I don't know nice plate for a dollar it's probably about a seven or eight dollar frame same with this one give a nice one got some fall theming to it here with the the leaves and then the canvas with the wood looks nice again for a dollar wow at Kohl's this was thirteen dollars or a penny shy of thirteen dollars but uh this one here was a dollar. If this was thirteen dollars, I can't imagine buying this new. But anyway, so I don't buy my picture frames new. Got one more picture frame here, then we'll get back to antiques. Got a picture frame here, some little red uh, flowers on it here. All right, let's get back to antiques. Because we still have a whole boatload of them. 
I'm not going to lay this on the table because it's really big. Norman Rockwell's America. It has a lot of Norman Rockwell. Uh, well, I let go of that. Uh, a lot of Norman Rockwell paintings, pictures of paintings in there, which is really cool. I really like Norman Rockwell. My receipt, I had it under my leg on the way home, and apparently I got sweaty or something because I wore all the ink off of there. Let me pick up something I blew off the table here. This is another book. This isn't going to be up here. It's a landscape book. It's supposed to be an art book, I think, is what the uh, tag says up here. Shows you how to paint different things, you know, like a barn and a wagon. Shows you how to draw stuff, I guess. Not not necessarily to paint it, but to draw it. I just thought it was cool. There's one of the things you can learn how to paint out of this book, which is really cool. There was three of those. I picked my favorite one and went with it. All right, this next bag is full of stuff here. First thing out of here is this disc. Okay, so say you're in Muncie. This tells you the distance from one point to another, you know, and of course, as you turn it around, these numbers change. So this back plate probably just has an insane amount of numbers on it. Good gravy. So anyway, that's pretty cool. So you have Michigan and Indiana. Which would make this Illinois in Ohio, and so on and so forth. It's supposed to be $2. I'm holding it upside down. It's supposed to be $2. Um, the guy that works there let me have that for, well, that and a couple other things. Overall, it was $5. They were things that didn't have a price tag on them. Uh, let me pull out the other two things. Alright, I did not buy an old, well, I guess I did buy an old Pringles can, but not, not for that. So, another thing in the $5 bundle was a Tootsie Toy truck that didn't have a price tag on it. And it's, it's broke right here. Um, the die cast has broken, but it's okay on this side. Pretty cool little truck. I think it's a neat looking truck. Little cab over. And trailer goes in here. 1970 is the copyright for that. Alright, in the newfangled potato chip jar. The Pringles jar. We have a whole farm and some other stuff that doesn't make sense. So... Here we have a fuel truck, which also appears to be a Tootsie toy. Maybe an International or a Diamond T. Kind of hard to tell. Sometimes they they say in the bottom, and sometimes they don't. This one doesn't. This one doesn't even say Tootsie toy in the bottom of it. But you can tell that's what it is by the wheels and just kind of basically how it's made. It's definitely a Tootsie toy. Which, believe it or not, these are made by the same company. Little rubber tractor here. It's not an Auburn rubber, I don't believe. It's not that old. It's not old enough to be Auburn rubber. Uh, no guess as to what kind of tractor it is. It could be some kind of English tractor as well, like a Leyland or something. I don't think it's an American tractor. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it's all rubber. It rolls around. It actually sits level. It looked like it was twisted, but it sits level. I uh, got some rubber fencing here that probably came new with that tractor. We have four or five pieces of, of that fence.
What other stuff did we get here? A pair of plastic pliers that are coming apart. Put those back in the can. We have a skunk. A kangaroo with Hong Kong on his belly there. These are old, you can tell by how crudely they're they're cast and painted. Uh I have a billy goat here. I bet this goat came with that tractor and that uh fence. He's kind of flat. We have a sea monster also made in Hong Kong. Looks I don't know if he looks angry as just uncomfortable. <laughs> or they caught him in the middle of a sneeze. We have a bull swishing his tail around. He's not felt. He kind of looks like he's felt, but he's not. Uh, <laughs> a giraffe with a sombrero. Is he a character from something and I don't know about it? Uh, what's your tail look like? I don't know what this is. Maybe a pig? No, that's not a pig. This is some kind of animal. It's a really fat dog. Can we just say that? This is a tiger. You can see his stripes on there. This this one you can tell is old. Uh, just that's probably from the same set as that kangaroo. Here we have a burrow or a donkey. It's got really really pointy ears and they're perked up. He's listening to something. He's got some uh, a saddle on him. It's kind of cool. A camel with yellow feet and black polka dots. A piece of cellophane. I don't need that. A cow with a really strange looking face. A collie. A sheep, but maybe that maybe that sounds like a goat. A little calf to to go with that cow looks like the calf is trying to drink something. Good gravy! A four humped camel on a train car. Is this from a Dr. Seuss thing? It's a four humped camel. Which I believe is something from Dr. Seuss. Uh, I don't remember anything about a train car, though. I'm not sure what's up with him. We have a horse with a tire stuck to his butt. We have a uh, horse. And a tire that does not appear to go with anything else in the container. The container itself is an old Pringles uh, jar. That's the, uh, the old Pringles logo. I don't know if that's the original one or not. This canister is part of a convenient multi-pack not to be sold separately. Well, I'm glad whoever had it didn't throw it away because it's kind of neat to see what the old ones look like. I don't even like Pringles, but it's still cool to see the, the bottle. What do we have? Two... Three, four. We have five pieces of fence made out of rubber, along with a rubber tractor that probably came with the fence new, and a little tootsie toy truck that dove down in there deep. All right, let's put that up there. Well, I'm trying to leave that spot open. Oh, we missed some animals here. A mother duck with her ducklings. Or maybe a goose with goslings. All of those were made in Hong Kong. 
All right, have a couple uh, trucks here. The first one is an old Japanese uh, truck. At first, I thought it was tin. If it's tin, it's heavy tin. I, it might be pressed steel. A lot of the uh, Japanese trucks were tin, but this, this seems like it might be pressed steel. This says, Hercules Sr. Bandai, made in Japan. It says Bandai on the side of the tractor. Or did I say, why did I say tractor? Side of the truck in the cab. It says Bandai. Got some pretty aggressive mud tires, snow tires on this truck here. Look, there's even a rock stuck in there. Uh, the window is not cracked. I think the back wind back of the window was cracked, yeah. But other than that, it's not cracked anywhere. Actually, that's really the only thing I can find wrong with it. Kind of a cool looking truck. Has the Bandai decal on both sides. Um, it has the chain and a string. Everything has came off of the pulley. It either needs more... I think it needs more chain. I don't know if I can find a chain that small somewhere or not. Alright, then we have a Tonka truck. We'll finish out the video with a Tonka truck. How's that? Because the next thing we have is... Well, it wasn't like that when I brought it home. All right. How do I go about taking the clock apart and putting that hand back in it? Because that won't work. I know how the clocks work. If the second hand, the not the second hand, but the second hand, like that counts the seconds. If that, uh, if that falls out, the clock won't work. Um, but any, I'll tell you about the clock, and then I'll, I guess, investigate how to go about fixing it. I'm not sure how this plastic comes out of here. I'm not sure how anything comes out of here. It's an alarm clock. It's, you know, you can turn the alarm off, but... It's a West Clocks, but you can see how everything's just kind of free in there right now. I, uh... It wasn't like I. I promise you, it wasn't like that when I got it. I think it was like three dollars. So hopefully, I can fix it. That's a nice looking clock. Um, I got this pen here, made by Emmons, E M M O N S. I don't know what I got it for. I just liked it. It looked like something that's probably from the 50s. Whatever it is, I just thought it was cool. You know, it's just got a little safety pin on it. You know, it's a piece of women's jewelry, I'm pretty sure. But I just thought it looked cool, so I got it. Um, this guy's missing his ladders. It's a pumper truck. Made by Tonka. Yet another use for these cabs. Tonka made use these cabs for everything. Uh, you can see there's supposed to be ladders on both sides of this, and they, they hang on these here. I've never seen this truck before, so I can't say I've ever seen the ladders for it. It's in pretty good shape. Actually, it's in very good shape. It's got, a cut, it's got some wear and tear on it, but it's a Tonka truck. Now, that wouldn't even be right if it looked mint. <laughs> uh, these are from the 70s. Uh, has the Tonka badge on the side there. It's got a little plastic cover in here. has some hose reels and a hose nozzle cast into it. Um, they made one of these trucks that sprayed water, which I have one. Um, well, they made a bunch of trucks that sprayed water. They made one this size that sprayed water. I have it, but the uh it doesn't spray water anymore somebody before me kind of 
messed messed with it and it, it it's kind of messed up it doesn't work right but anyway the chrome on this is pretty good it's got a couple spots where it's rubbed off but overall it's it's in really good shape the window only has one spot in it right there uh, the interior is really clean it's not all muddy the white plastic is not yellowed anywhere even on the wheels the white still pretty good on the wheels, the white lettering. Got a trailer hitch on it there. You'd have to have an awfully long tongue on the trailer to get under there, but it would work. Alright. I hope you enjoyed the haul video here. Um, sorry for you guys that were hoping to see another five pack video. I'll get back to those, but I wanted to get this done. Obviously, there's a lot here, so I didn't want that just sitting around. So, here it is. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe for more. If you know any additional information about, like, maybe this truck here, or this disc, which is a disc map from 1964. Plumbing Manufacturing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Alright, I, I don't really need much additional information on this, but if you have any information on anything that maybe I skipped over, um, specifically with maybe this truck or this truck, go ahead and let me know. If you know how to take that clock apart without breaking anything, please tell me. Because that's a really nice clock. And it worked when I got it. When the hands fall out of them, they, uh, some, something in them doesn't let them tick. So, I'll, uh, I'll have to get on the internet and see what I can find about that. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe for more. Have a great day. I'll catch you in the next video. And I hope you enjoyed this lengthy full haul video. So, you know it's a good haul video when it clutters the table. <laughs>